Let's move on and bring you some business news now on the programme. Yuka Royer is joining me here in the studio. Yuka, you're starting with the latest on the TikTok saga. Now, the video showing up is uh, seeking a court intervention now in the United States. Well, that's right. TikTok has asked the federal judge to block the Trump administration from banning the app on Apple and Google stores. Uh, lawyers for the company argue that the move is not motivated by genuine national security concern, but by political considerations relating to the upcoming election. The download ban had once been delayed as its Chinese owner ByteDance neared a deal with US firms Oracle and Walmart, but that agreement has been thrown into doubt after President Trump vowed to block a deal that would allow the Chinese firm to retain any control. Now, as we mentioned a short while ago, um, bars and restaurants in France's second biggest city, Marseille, being forced to shut down again from this weekend. But the deputy mayor of the city of Marseille uh, is calling the measure economic lockdown, uh, warning of terrible consequences. It comes just as businesses there started to recover from losses uh, caused by the drop in tourism and trade earlier in the year. Let's take a listen to some of the uh, local residents. Personnellement, je pense que c'est désolant de, de fermer euh, les restaurants euh, et les bars parce que c'est quand même euh, un aspect économique important de notre pays et ça va commencer à bloquer tout, euh, toute l'économie parce qu'il y a beaucoup de choses qui sont derrière. Ça a été très pénible pendant le confinement. Aujourd'hui, le démarrage est très compliqué. Rajouter une couche supplémentaire, euh, je pense qu'on va fermer beaucoup de boutiques, beaucoup de restaurants. Well, the pandemic has hurt all corners of the French economy, uh, which has plunged into a deep recession. The event, the event sector has just been recovering slightly, but people are worried things will get more difficult with new restrictions coming into place. Camille Nedelec reports. Empty lanes and quiet halls, slowly filling up again after France's national lockdown. This show in Paris was able to open its doors, albeit with some changes. On a essayé au mieux et je pense qu'on a réussi de gérer les flux en élargissant, en distanciant et en protégeant au maximum. This trade show for digital professionals was originally scheduled for March, but was then pushed back to May before finally happening this week. It's a big relief for exhibitors like this small business owner. C'est un peu comme si vous compariez les sites web de rencontre avec la rencontre physique, la rencontre réelle. Eh bien, dans le business, c'est pareil. Il y a des choses qu'on peut communiquer au travers d'Internet. Il y a des choses qui nécessitent de, de se voir physiquement pour rentrer dans le détail. Here, the previous limit of 5,000 people was easy to stick to, though many were well aware that the risk of further restrictions coming in were high. For organizers, the drop to 1,000 visitors puts the future of the industry at stake. Au-delà même de notre intérêt à nous, c'est toute la chaîne événementielle qui ne pourra plus travailler. Tout va être purement et simplement annulé. It's a hard blow for an already badly affected sector. In the Paris area alone, 202 trade shows were cancelled, with nearly 13 billion euros worth of losses. While over 400 conferences were also cancelled, adding up to a loss of 703 million euros. Leading events company Comexposium has filed for debt protection, blaming the coronavirus pandemic. The sector may not see a return to business as usual until 2022. On with the business. We're going to take uh, a quick look at the markets now, Yuka. Well, trading just got underway here in Europe and uh, major markets are seeing a losing trend. Uh, London's FTSE and France's CAC 40 both opening down uh, well below 1%. Uh, Frankfurt stacks also down almost 1%. Asian shares are traded in negative territory as well as investor confidence about a global economic recovery from the pandemic has again started fading. And finally from Yoko, the US state of California has set uh, a pretty ambitious goal. Now, it aims to actually ban the sale of all new gasoline-powered cars and lorries. It's not for 15 years, but it's still significant, isn't it? The announcement is the most uh, significant yet by a US state uh, in aiming to phase out fossil fuel-based cars and combat climate change. The US car market is already shifting towards electric vehicles and some analysts say EVs could overtake petrol-run cars long before the 2035 deadline set by California. The White House issued a statement, meanwhile, calling the move alarming that would destroy jobs and raise customer costs. Here's California's Governor Gavin Newsom speaking on Wednesday. 
transportation sector in the state of California represents over 50 percent of all of the emissions, 41 percent directly uh, related to vehicles, uh, 11 percent related to the production of uh, petroleum fuels. As a consequence, when we are looking to achieve our audacious goals to get to 100 percent uh, uh, carbon free economy by 2045, uh, we can't get there unless we accelerate our efforts in the transportation sector. An ambitious goal there announced by the state of California. Thanks very much, Yuka. Yuka Royer with the business news on France.